In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the simple grid. In the last video, we had a regular grid. Simple grid allows you to make a grid without as many of the details as you would. So it kind of takes the customization away to a degree, but allows you to get up and going uh, a bit faster. So we're going to start off with the docs. And then after that, I'm going to go through some examples, really just kind of showing how the docs work with more, I guess, uh, strenuous attention to them. So let's uh, get to the docs and then we'll get to the coding. So looking at the docs for Simple Grid, at the top it says, if you're like me, you probably tend to check MDN docs for anything CSS Grid. And that's actually pretty true. For the last section for Grid, I actually had to look up the docs and then look up pictures and other stuff as well because, you know, there's a lot going on with, with Grid. There's a lot of things you can do, a lot of customization. And so sometimes you have to go beyond what you would typically do for just looking up a you know very simple use case. So a simple grid allows you to use a grid and it kind of automates a lot of stuff for you, which is pretty cool. So let's get to looking at that down below here. The import is pretty predictable, but let's look at this usage right here. It says specify the number of columns for the grid layout. We see columns is two. We have all of these boxes in here. Notice the absence of grid items on the inside. We just have boxes in here. If we wanted to do it, imagine with pictures, other content we could, but boxes are you know pretty easy for examples. And we see we have two columns here and we have a bunch of these boxes. So how do these get divided up? In the example section of this tutorial where I actually code, I'm going to code this out verbatim and then show you in the dev tools what's going on and then make some variations to it. So it looks as easy as the spacing 10. It looks like it's spacing it everywhere evenly. And the columns for right now is, well, two. If we come down here, we could do something a little bit more advanced, though it's not like technical advanced. We see that with columns, you don't have to just defeat it two, which is two across the board. Sorry for the car honking. Living in an apartment is sometimes very annoying. We can see that we have two, and two, if we look up here, corresponds to small. Null must mean medium, so there's no value there for it. And then there's three for large, and I believe there's an extra large two. So right now there is three across here, so that must mean that there is a, you know, when it's medium, there are three columns available. And when it's small, only two of these will be present. So there'll be one row with one column. Once again, I'm going to show this in the example section of the tutorial. And right here, we see we have auto responsive grid. So we have the min child width, which is 120 pixels. We're spacing them at 40 pixels between all of them here. And so once again, we have a bunch of boxes coming down here, but it is looking to just auto fit it the best it can. So depending upon the given width of these boxes, since we're not specifying anything specific in these boxes, it's just divvying them up for all the, you know, minimum child widths possible to fit as many as it can into one row or, you know, per column, however you're looking at this here. And we're going to play with this as well. Looking at this right here, we could uh, change uh, the spacing for columns and rows. Simply pass the spacing prop to change the row and column spacing between grid items. Simple grid allows you to pass spacing X and spacing Y to define the space between columns and rows, respectively. So if I scroll up here, we can see spacing is 40X, and that is just across the board for everything. Even though it's a simple grid coming back down here, we could say, no, 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 no. For X, we want a much larger gap than we do for, say, Y right here, which is obviously half the space Although maybe your eyeballs are like mine, you're like, is that half? But you could definitely tell that between the rows here, it's a much smaller gap, which I think is a pretty cool feature as well, because that allows you to tweak while not going into you know too much detail or having to use the full blown grid to set something up specifically. It's given to you, you know, pretty straightforward right here. And then as we look down here. We could see there's all the props that you could use. I'm going to try and go through most of them here. 
I always recommend going through and playing with some of these things and just experimenting for yourself. But with that, let's go ahead and uh, let's get to coding. All right, so in this first tutorial, we're going to be looking at the simple grid columns. We've already seen the example in the actual docs, but let's kind of see what's actually going on here. So let's go ahead and type this out. Okay, now that I have all the weird stuff uh, removed from uh, inside of here, let's look at this. So it says we have two columns, spacing 10, nothing different than what we just covered, but let's see kind of what's going on back here. So, so we expand this on out, two columns, and we see that it's always going to be two columns here. So let's check inside. If you remember from the last tutorial, and I recommend going back to check it out, we see a repeat, which should look familiar. And then we have two. Now we have the min-max, this function going on in here. And that's just keeping them, you know, orderly. So they're taking up the same space. But we can see that these are going to take up, or we're going to have two columns here. So it's just going to divide out by how many there are. And since there's five boxes here, that's why there's an odd one out. So if you remember from the last tutorial, you had to type out that whole long, comparatively, right, way to say how many columns you want. And now you could just come in and say one. And now it makes them all look like they're, you know, a bunch of rows rather than columns. But you could also come in here and do five. And if we're going to inspect in here, we will see that now we have five columns and it is that easy. So let's go on to the next section here, and we're going to look at the min width, and then we're also going to look at the spacing X and spacing Y for a bit more adjusting between items inside of a grid. In this section of the tutorial, we're going to be looking at min child width, and also ways to space between the X and Y, or rows and columns, as they get put into your grid. So let's go ahead and instead of having the columns be kind of just like set right here, let's use this prop. And we see it looks like, oh, we have min child width right here, 100 pixels, and it's like this big fat line. If we go over it though, we do see definite sections here. So this would be a good opportunity to come in and use spacing X and spacing why? Let's do that. So X going across the X axis right here, we can see it doesn't look like this giant fat tomato orangey reddish kind of color here. We now have definitive boxes in here and that's because of the spacing X. So let's do something interesting here and let's add some more boxes. And we see that eventually we just have too many boxes for the columns here. Let's check this out. And we can see that we have an auto fit right here. And it's 100 pixels and we're trying to put, you know, as many as we can in here evenly. So what if we just don't want, you know, this, this blob going on right here? say there's actual content going on, you're going to want some logical spacing. So let's do that. So now we have a healthy gap in between this row right here and this row right here. And so as we move it in and out, you know, if it gets really, really tiny, you only have enough space for one box. But as we come through here, let's highlight one of these. We see that it's 80 pixels uh, for the height. It's, you know, the tomato color right here. But, you know, there's there's no other, like, 
technical stuff going on in the background here. It's the simple grid looking at the width of all these and doing the calculation of how many columns can I make for as many boxes as there are that are in here. So sometimes you want a, a definitive set of columns and there's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes you think, well, I want to fit as many of these guys in here as possible. So let's do one last experiment here and do a width. So this first one here is pretty long, right? And as we make this unbearably small, we can see that the min width child is at least 100. So these are all 100 right here. But this one is 500, so it's going to be five times that. So if you come across here, we see that you could still make certain boxes or elements inside a larger width, but it has to be at least minimally 100 pixels. And so this is just another goofy way of playing around with this stuff. Feel free to incorporate it in your design. Don't think that the simple grid props in here kind of dictate how everything should be in like a negative way down below. Just think of it is the kind of canvas you want to paint on. So in the next section, what we're going to do is look at the custom breakpoints with simple grids. And this will allow you to do something like this, but it's going to look for specific breakpoints that Chakra uses to fit our content on the screen. So in this video, or at least this section of the video, right, we're going to be looking at columns and we're going to see how we could change on certain breakpoints how much or how many, I should say, columns we could fit in a given span. So let me show you what they mean by this. So right here we have five right here. And so it goes small, medium, large. I believe this is the extra large. I think those are the only four sizes in Chakra off the top of my head. So let's go ahead and expand this, if it'll let me expand this on out and this is responsive so i'm going to stretch this out so right now we're a small screen size and let's expand this out four three and then this is where we hit the extra large size right here and it maxes out at that which is pretty interesting because as you make responsive designs going from a mobile to a tablet to a you know some people have those giant, you know, super wide bendy monitors and they take up an entire desk. Now, I don't think we have the breakpoints to handle that per se, although Chakra probably provides you a way to do that. I just haven't checked into it. We could see for 99% of the use cases out there, we could take your content that you're going to be providing on a given page and we could divide it on out dependent upon the user's screen size. And all we do is just provide columns with an object right here and then an array on the inside of how we want all the content in here divided on up. So I uh, hope you like that and like, share, subscribe if you support this channel. And I'll see y'all in the next tutorial in the series. Take care.